Hello, uh, I'm Sifu Andrew Platt from uh, Little Man of Heaven UK School in Manchester. I teach uh, Xingyi, Splash Yinans, Tai Chi. Um, yeah, so uh, today I want to really talk about Xingyi. Um, not just Xingyi, but really um, uh, energy. Energy in the body, the energetic level after the physical level, the energy body. And obviously uh, energy within us um, is exactly the same as energy in the universe so um obviously by understanding one we try and understand the other and by understanding the world around us we try and understand ourselves so um yeah today uh xing yi um and energy uh nice and simple well <laughs> obviously depending which way you look at it um so the study of energy is very important uh itself because obviously it's beyond the physical it's what drives the physical body um, it's what makes everything move. Matter would just sit and do nothing if energy did not have its effect on it. Um, so uh, the two go hand in hand. But a couple of um, things that we know that we must have the equal amount of energy to matter in the world or one would not move. If we only had energy, there would be nothing for the energy to affect. And if we only had matter, then the matter would just uh, not, not be changed at all. So the two have to work together and they both work on their uh, principal atoms and particles um, yeah so the study of the physical body and the energy body is is probably as old as time itself or civilization um, now Shingi is a manifestation of the study of energy uh, obviously has a little bit of physical and spiritual mental and consciousness as well but it was the, uh, primarily a form of developing energy um, Ao Xingyi uh, comes from uh, Xiongqi um, in China and uh, Master Chao, um, which uh, they both uh, taught Sifu McNeil and um, he has passed them on to us. Uh, so uh, some of the information, obviously our physical side um, is, is from that and uh, it was, it, those two have been um, pretty much deemed as the most traditional, unchanged and um, I, as true to the original teachings as possible. Um, so our physical side is, you know, uh, we can link it to to the energy quite well. So the movements have been kept the same. Um, so yeah, the the legend is that Shingi. Um, it's from uh, nine nine hundred and sixty A.D. roughly. Um, obviously, as far back as we can document it, the the legend goes that a Taoist monk came down from the uh, monastery in the mountains and taught a man um, and he then passed it on. Uh, so the chances are obviously it was uh, developed up in the mountains, most likely from a time from um, when Bodhidharma came from India and in 400 AD and inspired um, the physical change, the internal martial arts and um, he didn't bring Chingy, um, he just uh, probably um, instigated the idea that all uh, theoretical concepts, even including the I Ching and um, Little Iron Heaven and all Taoist uh, beliefs, were then turned into um, martial arts. There was still obviously some martial arts before that, but um, it seemed that he inspired a little bit of a revolution there. Uh, but that, that's just my take on it. Um, so, yeah, think for yourselves. Um, but yeah, the, everyone forgets that the actual five element theory is a lot older and comes from before Shingi was created. Um, yeah, it, it really was an, uh, a development point itself, like, like astrology is today or anything else. It was just a study of the universe, study of a science um, and trying to learn more about it. The actual five element theory was made um, in 1600 BC, so uh, what well, almost six, uh, yeah, almost like a thousand years before the actual forms were made. So, you know, the study in the actual theory behind it is, is the main principle behind it. The, the physical side is an add-on, an addition, and a way of using it in our body and understanding it. But the actual theory itself is very important. And a lot of people forget that they just see the martial art. And, and that's it really, which is a shame because that's it's losing uh, a very large part of, of its um, origin. Uh, yeah, that was made by a man called Wu Xing and uh, that was even before King Wen and um, Confucianism and the I Ching 
started to get created. So, you know, it really is an old, old theory, very Taoist in origin, um, very, you know, original, very close to the Yellow Emperor's line of thought, who came up with, you know, some of the basics that, that built this, this progression of knowledge. So, um, Let's just look at the, the physical. So again, we're looking at energy, purely energy side today, but I want to look at the physical way we use it to begin with, just so you can relate it to the forms. Um, so looking at the five element forms, uh, each element form has a purpose and um, a use of force. So all energy in the body uh, is made to create mechanical energy, kinetic energy, um, and force okay so we use all these different types of energy to move and the way we move is by using the forms um, and each of the five forms has a five different direction uh, and that uses different muscles so it's a perfect way of developing the body for example metal is downwards and splitting and that uses downwards muscles to pull downwards and push down so we're using all the underneath muscles here um, water is uplifting this way so we're using the muscles on the top to lift up and push Wood is straightforward, we're using linear sagittal motion forwards to push and pull. Fire is a twisting and forwards motion, so we've got transverse and sagittal going on at the same time. Earth is curvature and round, so again, more transverse. Um, yeah, so we're using all the different muscle groups. The actual force of the motion, as all things, back in the day, uh, being uh, for the knowledge I've, I've put this video together, it's from my understanding of Shingi, my understanding of Western alchemy and science, Eastern alchemy science, and also Central Asian kind of Indian alchemy and science and all. Because if you study one thing, if you, as long as it's real and it's factual, then uh, your results will always be the same. And it's just a different way of explaining each one. And I'm just going to apply them together because all three cultures have kind of Got the same take, uh, different takes on the same thing, but all working together to come up with the same, same kind of um, end game. So I'm going to try and describe all them and add them together, and you'll see see what's going on because it's more descriptive that way. But yeah, back in the day, um, they again looking at the outside world and the inside world, they would use outside analogies such as metal, water, wood, fire, and earth to describe certain principles in different ways. So um, if we look at energies again, uh, metal is um, uh, the physical act, something man-made, uh, which is mechanical, it's movement. All things moving uh, are pushed up and then eventually gravitates of course, and it comes down, which is why metal has its upwards motion to start with and then its downwards motion to finish because we propel it up and eventually then it falls down and metal is the idea of coming down, splitting and chopping. Um, and we'll go into the energy side later on. Uh, I'm just going to try and whiz through all this quite quickly, there's a lot of information. Um, uh, yeah, uh, water is upwards motion, um, and a lot of people forget about water is not just sea, because sea and water always goes down, it also finds the lowest point, but also the water in the air, the evaporation, the clouds, and that lifts. So as much energy as it's going down, there's also energy going up, and that's what water is. It's the pulling back down of the heavy, lower water in the, in the the on the Earth's surface, and then the upwards lifting, um, this way of, um, of the air rising and lifting up into the sky, into the clouds. Um, we also have different types of water as well, because there's obviously for, um, all, all the elements can come to five of five halves of elements. So this is where it gets slightly confusing. You've got Plato's um, and Aristotle's five element, uh, four element theory, earth, fire, water and air. This is why most people get confused, because it's not the same elements talking about as... Um, the five elements um, is two separate things. You've got uh, this is purely how energy works, but the four elements are to do with the four parts of the world. Um, so heat energy is uh, the actual absence of heat, which is ice, water, ice. Um, you've got water, water, which is obviously the sea water, it's very watery water. <laughs> um, you've got earth water, which is oil, which is where it just sits and stagnates at the bottom. It's very dense, doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Um, and you've also got air water, which is obviously in the clouds. And this can be applied to all, all the five elements. Um, you've got wood. Wood is life. Wood is um, life. Wood, plants growing from the ground. So and the idea of straight is a wood, um, a wood tree or a plant always grows directly straight to its, its desired goal, which in most cases is sunlight. So trees will grow straight up to sunlight. 
or down into the earth to get what they need, which is why earth is always straight and down straight to the point. Because if you're attacking, you're going straight forwards. You don't want to go up and round and up and above and down. You just want to go straight, bam, straight into where you hit. So that's the idea why, why wood is a straight line. Um, and then you have fire. Fire is an interesting one. Uh, pounds like a cannon. So it twists and think, but it's, it's full body. It's not just... Uh, the bottom part or the top part twisting it's the whole body moving as one and that's to do with fire energy um, uplifting and burning it just does the same thing um, and finally earth earth is round now this is a good one because everyone thinks earth gravity well it should go down as well actually round because if you have gravity perfect gravity it always makes a sphere if you have mercury roll mercury it always makes a perfect sphere um, the Earth is a sphere because the gravity pulls it into a circle. Therefore, it's actually curved on the outside. The force of gravity is curved, even though we only see the downwards motion. It's upwards. It's all in all directions. Therefore, Earth is round and curved. So that gives us that physical force, which is part of kinetic energy, which we'll talk about later. Now, the actual structure, uh, if you haven't seen it already, uh, get a picture up quickly and have a look. I can't get it up on here at the minute. I might try and clip it onto the end. If not, you can have a look on our site or the Little Nine Heaven site or just put in five element like theory and it will come up. Yeah, the five pentagram. Now this tells us why it's energy, okay? Um, the fifth stage of creation, the fifth uh, fifth chakra, fifth stage, blah, 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 is all, it's energy. That's all it is, it's energy. It comes from the Dantian here where any, everything is stored and circulates, okay? So that's our center of body, is our Dantian here just below the navel point. And that's what we know. Energy is stored and generated and then moved around the body. Um, so uh, five, five in pentagram, OK, which is also interesting because Wicca and um, witchcraft, blah, 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 also use the pentagram, which is five. But that's because they study energy in the world and life and plants and fire and everything else like that. So although it's got a little bit of a uh, mythological side to it, it's still actually the study of um, energy in the universe, but five elements we're going to look at the energy within us, not in the human world today. Um, so that's why there's five elements, okay? Um, now, this is a good bit. Uh, we know today there are eight forms of energy, okay? If we're, if we're looking at kinetic energy and potential energy, potential energy is energy that's stored and held, ready to be used. Kinetic energy is energy that has is being used, that has been used, ready to be stored. And we know that these things can't be destroyed, but it's just in a constant cycle, hence the creation destruction cycle um, in the five element theory. So, um, yeah, if we look at those eight, we have to place those eight. So now in modern times, we can say, oh, this is electrical, this is magnetic, blah, 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 blah. Um, back in the day, they didn't know it. We didn't have the scientific equipment or know-how, but they knew its effects on the world. So rather than give it a name, they named it after its effects. Yeah, does that make sense? So um, rather than name electrical energy, they would then see how electrical energy works and name it after that because it's not an actual thing they could name. And then we now have named it in the future. So uh, let's go through quickly. The kinetic energies are magnetic, electric, um, mechanical, uh, which is type of kinetic, and thermal. Uh, storage are things like chemical, um, elasticity, um, nuclear, and there's one more. I forgot, it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, but yeah, so these these are in the five element linkage chain, but not described as such. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly go through. Fire is thermal energy. It's just heat. That's the fairly obvious one. It's the only one you can physically see is fire. Um, and it is just thermal energy and heat given off from the body and, you know, in the world by burning. Um, I've gone the wrong way, I should have gone and start from out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, fire at the top. And that's why fire is actually at the top of the um, chain because it's the most visible, it's the most obvious. Therefore, it's the most pure form of energy in the physical realm. Um, so, Earth is the next one. And Earth is ah, gravitational, is the other, uh, other uh, potential energy. Gravitational is fairly obvious. It sucks in um, everything, it brings everything to it. Therefore, um, Earth is gravitational energy because it, it's the Earth. Everything stores in the Earth and it just hells there and sits there. Okay, so that's a fairly obvious one. 
Um, the next one, metal, is obviously man-made and it's mechanical because it doesn't actually have its own energy source. It's used, it's driven by heat or gravitational or electrical or whatever to drive something. It's force, physical force, usually human-made um, from various uh, accumulations of energy being used. Um, yeah, so then we have water. Water's a tough one. It's elasticity and elastic energy. And the reason for this, it took me a while to work out, um, is because it's all about being held back and released like the tide. Uh, but also, yeah, it's stored in the clouds and then when it's ready, it gets released down, it drops down, it gets stored in the water and when it's ready, it gets released back up. So it's all about elasticity. For example, holding a dam back gives it potential energy and when it's unleashed it then washes away into the world and that is again the form of holding the spring and letting it go which is very similar to the form because you, you coil it up you have potential and then you let it go and you release it upwards into the air um yes yeah, so that's a good one that one's a nice one and um, and the last one is wood and wood is life and all life is chemical energy Okay, so it's storage and usage of chemical energy to create uh, reactions, internal um, exothermic and endothermic reactions in the body and plant itself from other types of energy. Okay, so the other two types of energy, or these three types of energy we haven't mentioned, which are quite interesting because they're actually quite hard to find in the chart. You've got five elements there, but there's actually eight, so that gives us three myths in five to seven, eight. Now, the, these are quite good. The... The cycle, the creation cycle that links the elements around this way, actually are two types of energy. And that is hidden in the diagram, but actually it's the governor and conception vessel of the body. We'll go into that quickly later on. Um, so it's a circular energy pattern in the body that actually drives the other energy forces around because they don't just sit there and work separately. They get driven around. Um, and these are electrical and magnetic, okay, in both orders, because electric energy can make magnetic energy, magnetic energy can uh, move electrical energy. And this is your little nine heaven circuit in the body. Um, uh, there's other, other ways of calling it, middle pillar, um, whatever. But it goes up the back, down to the top of the head, up to the top of the head, and falls back down. So we've got an uplifting and sinking motion. Um, and this is done as it as it rotates, or also in the stomach as a microco uh, microcosm and a macrocosm in the body and the greater macrocosm in the world. Um, you've got the electrical energy that moves down and the magnetism moves up, and it's a spiral like an electromagnet that, that drives the whole body and all its energy within it. So that's kind of the driving force, which is why the governor and conception vessel drive all the other vessels and meridians in the body for the for the organs. Um, while we're on that subject, each element has a meridian and it drives energy into each, um, each Each element has two organs, a yin and a yang, and each one uses a different type of energy, um, whether it be uh, thermal, uh, gravitational, chemical. For example, the stomach is um, you know, chemical and wood, no it's not, that's liver. Uh, it's, it breaks down things in the liver, so it's it's constantly rotation through chemical um, energy. Uh, but those lines run through the body and you can access them to strengthen and weaken those energies in the organs. Um, that's a subject for another time. Now, uh, yeah, the last type of energy we haven't mentioned, and this is really, really interesting because they wouldn't have known anything about this back then. It is nuclear energy, but we knew it exists because everything um, is made of cells and atoms and... Uh, <laughs> molecules and nuclear energy is in the center of every cell it's in all of our cells every atom um, and it's the most strongest form of energy and it kind of contains everything it drives everything including the magnetic and electrical force because they're made of of this as well so it's a very essence basic energy and it's also called the prima materia um, of the uh, eastern alchemy uh, so western alchemy and eastern alchemy it's the yin and yang um, and it's the very center of everything that it's in everything, it's in energy, it's in physical, blah, 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 and that drives everything. So actually in the diagram, it's not on the diagram, but it is in the diagram, it's in the center. It's the very center of the diagram. So if you've got the, um, the the five elements here like this, it's in the center, and it's very rarely drawn, but it's everything working together in one in the center, and that can be exploded outwards as a macrocosm, or compacted inwards to become a microcosm within the cells. So within that, you have eight elements actually uh, even though there's five elements 
this is interesting, you see. Um, there's actually eight forms of energy moving around. Now, with every type of um, energy, there is a process uh, because it has to be used. You can't just have energy sat around. It has to use itself. And that's where the destruction cycle comes in. And that is, um, again, a very crucial part of Shingi because the creation cycle is where you already formed metal, water, wood, fire, and earth, and, and then back to metal again. So it's like a cycle, creation cycle. This is the destructive cycle, and it's how you use energy, not just in the body. You can use it to create uh, chemical experiments, um, alchemy experiments, but also it happens in the outside world again, 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 in a natural form, but over long periods of time. Now, um, the names for these are we never really mentioned the five element theory. We just know that this does this, this does this, this does this, because it's a lot older. Uh, in, the, in the medieval times, in um, Western alchemy, these processes were given names, and each of these names is very important. And it's also um, the seven stages of um, self-discovery. Uh, and you use these to burn your consciousness, but we're not looking at that. We're looking at um, energy. So uh, I've got it here just to make sure I don't, don't leave anything out. Um, all right, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, the first stage is calcination, which is basically the burning or incineration of a um, matter to create purity. You burn away all the impurities. Yeah, we call it crushing the ego. Um, we're getting rid of all all the rubbish in our mind that we don't need. So, for example, a plant is made mostly of water. Um, we try to find the very necessity of it, so we burn it and we turn it down to ash, and that's its its very core core materials. Um, so that comes from fire. Fire to metal, okay, that's calcination by use of thermal fire, and it will create mechanical, which is metal, okay? Because we know if we train a lot, what do we do? We get hot, we generate energy, we generate heat, and that's why the more mechanical energy we, we need, we generate more heat, just like a steam train. Um, and it works the other way around as well. Yeah, the more uh, more mechanical energy we make, the more heat energy. So these two go hand in hand, and that is the process. The more you train, you are calcinating, you're calcifying your body um, and burning the body and burning it up. And you're burning your personality because you're not thinking about everything else that's going on. You're thinking about training because that's all you can think about because you're tired. Okay, so that's our first first process. Very important one now. Now, um, the mechanical energy is then turned into water energy, um, which, uh, no, turned into wood energy, um, because metal splits wood. Yeah, we all know that metal splits wood. So what that is, it's separation, okay? If we imagine a tree or a plant, all the, it separates into its levels. It's got its roots, its middle, and it and its, um, it, it, its leaves at the top. So it separates into its different levels of life, okay? And it's very important. So like, if you leave a liquid, it'll separate into its many states of um, density. And what you're doing is you're scraping each one off and you're collecting it separately. And, and that's it, separation. So when you cut a tree, you're separating it top and bottom. Yeah, and that's just what it is. We're using the mechanical energy and the moving energy and we're, we're pulling it and we're separating our energy within us. And that's a very important process um, to create uh, chemical energy, because what chemical energy is, it also strips away the levels of things like your stomach. When you ingest, um, you'll use um, chemical energy in the intestines um, and liver and core bladder and everywhere else to um, take away minerals one at a time. Yeah, and that's how, that's that's basically what chemical it does. It strips away layer by layer. So uh, now you have chem chemical energy made from separation. Um, so water is then uh, it water beats earth. Uh, no, earth beats water by by drawing it in. Okay, so after water you have earth, and what happens is the way earth beats water is by using gravital gravitational energy by sucking it in and holding it. So if you pour um, water onto soil, what happens? It doesn't go anywhere. It just gets absorbed. It gets stuck. And this is a form of conjunction. Okay, so once you have your pure um, raw materials that have been calcified and then separated. You have your pure materials, okay? So what you do is you take them off and you and you join them together after you've got rid of the bits you don't want, okay? And you join them together and you join them with all the things to, um, to, to, to basically develop them a little bit more, to build them up. So once you've got your chemical energy of wood, you are then, um, can, Conjunction, using conjunction by conjoining um, into into earth and the gravity. 
Now, once you've got your um, gravitational energy in your conjunctive material, it's fermentation. Fermentation turns Earth into water. Okay? Uh, yeah, um, Earth turns into water. So wood previously would turn into Earth because it, it rots and goes back into the ground. Sorry, my mistake. Um, yeah, it falls back into the ground, rots, and then um, held, held it um, in, in gravitational force and then um, access to the water. So, yeah, um, when it's in the ground, what happens is fermentation, it becomes stagnant, it rots. Uh, you also then get a clean layer of um, non-rotting material on the top, like a yellowy liquid. This takes a long time. So after you've done that, you collect that off, okay? Then you put that in water, all right? So after the fermentation, you put that in water through elastic energy, and that's um, dissolution uh, dissolving. So it's like when you put sugar into, into water, it dissolves. Um, so that's that process from from earth to water is is fermentation and from water back into fire is dissolution where you're putting the water uh, the, the dissolved fermentation materials that are rotted back into water and then then you, then you use that back in in the fire to feed um, the energy and blow up so on so you've got this cycle going through it's a little bit confusing without the chart in front of you if you can't see but yeah you have um you seven uh, chemical processes, okay? So we start with um, calcination, um, then into separation, then into conjunction, then into fermentation, and then into dissolution, okay? Once you have your dissoluted material, your liquid, okay, you then, uh, you then have to distill it. Now, if any of you have done distilling before, what happens is you heat the liquid from the bottom and that sends the um, distiller up into, into the atmosphere, um, which is then collected, cooled down and brought into a more, um, more uh, refined state. So, for example, you can take wine and you can distill wine and then the, um, the alcohol gets distilled off, whereas the impurities that are from the wine stay and you're left to get thrown away. So what you're doing is you're purifying the, um, the essence of the material inside you, this energy, you purify it. And distillation, very important, you get your governor conception channel from. Um, distillation is heating from the dantien and lifting the energy up the back channel up to the top of the head where it rises through distillation, yeah, through heat, and then it cools down at the top, furthest away from the fire, and it drops down again down the front. Okay? So after you've got distillation, you're then adding it back down to the start which is coagulation. Now, coagulation is adding everything together. It's also adding it to your body. The final stage of alchemy is coagulation and making your philosopher's stone as, as it is. Um, but you're adding it back to the body okay, and, and you, using it. So this constant redistillation and coagulation that, that happens in the stomach area of energy um, is your circular process. Yeah? And this is why this process is so important in Little Night Heaven and internal martial arts. So you're, you're generating the energy within you using your five different energies in the body in conjunction with each other, which use different processes. Yeah? Um, fermentation, dissolution, separation, all this is going on. But the end product, all that gets added back to your pool of energy in your dantian, which is then distilled and coagulated repeatedly blah 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 which creates magnetic and electrical force which then builds up your health your immune your immunity your energy levels everything else so it's like everything leads to these last two essences so most people um forget about that and they just work on on this um different you know during the life most people that don't practice this just work on you know, uh, oh, I'm feeling ill. I'll I'll need to eat differently, and this changes the chemical structure of your, um, your your chemical processes. What you need to do is, if you concentrate on your circular cycle, that will increase the need for more energy, and because it needs more energy in this cycle, you can't distill something with no material. So you need more material. So what your body does, it then starts to gain energy from other places yeah it it creates the need to eat properly it creates the need to sleep properly it creates the need to to, to exercise more to to need heat to need um all the different types of energies so it's like selling something if if, if 
if there is no need for it, then it won't be bought. But if there is a demand for it, then it will be bought. And it's the same with the body. You create this need by moving your cycle up and down consciously, and that creates a need for energy, and then your body will find the energy it needs from the world. Um, it's quite an interesting process. It's like a positive feedback loop. Um, and that's it, really. So you've got your five elements, um, in in uh, which are the five different types of energy. You've also got your governor conception channel, which are two different types of energy, magnetic and electrical. You've got your nuclear in the center, um, which contains and holds all things together. But then you have your, your seven chemical processes around that. So when you're practicing your five elements, um, when you're when you're moving, it's not just about movement. You need to be looking at the energy inside you. So when you're doing wood and you're using chemical energy, you need to be thinking and feeling at the same time. OK, my force is in line. It's nice and straight because that's how I've been taught. That's how my form is. That's fine. So then you need to look at where that energy comes from. You need to be looking at wood. Right. OK, it's chemical energy. So how I need to use my chemical energy in the body and I need to use it and force it forwards and, and apply it to whatever I hit and whatever I strike or use it to build um, the power in the body. So don't just stand there like this, actually push forwards, feel yourself pushing forwards with force, but then feel chemical energy using and building to create that kinetic energy, that movement, that force. When you're doing earth and you're round here, feel gravitational energy pull within you and push. Don't just stand there like this, feel it, feel this curvature and then feel the gravitational energy of the ground and, and the earth, earth energy within you um, being applied to make movement and the same with metal when you push in here push downwards push down and feel the split in action even in a stationary posture and feel the, the pure mechanical energy be driven from the other energies um, water again elastic feel the twist here in the pull and unleash upwards and feel the driving upwards from the body even when stood here you should be lifting uplifting always pushing upwards and this comes from um, the water energy, elastic energy, and feel that elastic energy in the body being generated and the processes to make it and then feel it in the movement itself. Um, yeah, so it is more, it's a full system, it's a full complete system and, and it's really not just about the physical, it's all about the energy and how you use it. Um, and then obviously feeling that the, the governor conception channel going around with a, with a circulation of magnetic and electrical, which is quite a, quite a big part to play and very easily forgotten about in the form. Um, yeah, and that, that's it really. So when, when you're doing the form, there's two parts to every form, remember as well. There's the movement, the soft movement, and then there's the half step, the power, the explosiveness. So the first part, the, the yin side of it. It's all about self-creation, feeling the energy work and provide and move in the body and generate. It's, it's all happening at once. And then when you do your half step, you're releasing it into the world, into whatever you touch, your external um, insertion, uh, which is where, you know, you hit. So if you're, if you're using metal from the elbow down this way, then your insertion is here. If it's your hand here, if you're using your hip, pushing down from the hip. Um, and that's where your energy is going. So you need to, on the half step, really think about that energy being generated here, manu um, manipulated and moved and, um, you know, just generally progressed in the body and then expelled <clears throat> and really pushed outwards. Um, I'll finish on an interesting note, but uh, spirit, the Xing Yi is obviously called spirit boxing. Um, spirit, uh, most people find is also with the mind as well and um, you know put spirit <clears throat> put energy but it's not just about that spirit was also another name for energy um it's the if you look at spirits actual drinking spirits spirits were used as the medium to extract energy from plants and minerals um so spirit actually came from the name energy and uh, the volatile and fixed part of energy and so the word spirit doesn't necessarily mean actual put spirit in. It means put energy in. Think about energy in your movement and use it to to improve your lifestyle and to understand the world and yourself as in. So uh, that's my take on um, Chingy and what it's all about to me. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, please, please let me know. Either on here or give me an email. Um, yeah, so keep up the training. Um, if you're already doing Xing Yi, then I hope that helps and gives you a little bit more to think about. If not, you already know it, then cool. Then it's good to just reassess and hear someone else's take on it. So um, 
thank you very much and uh, enjoy.